My life was horrible. I mean, my childhood was the worst you could ever imagine. A child growing up with a horrible, crazy, lunatic mother uh, in the worst neighborhoods of Far Rockaway, New York, in the slums, surrounded by criminals and the worst element of society that you could imagine in a shitbox bungalow that was only made to live in the summertime. My father had us live there all year round because he was a cheapskate. That's why I live here. Everything my parents did, I'm the opposite. My mother used to beat the hell out of me as a kid for no reason. I never raised a hand on my kids. My father always wanted to be a cheapskate and live in dumps and save every little penny he could and sacrifice uh, decent living. I'm the opposite. My father worked, he was uh, actually like an engineer for the sanitation department of New York City. My mother worked for the welfare department, but she was seriously mentally ill. I mean, you know, when I was a kid, I always knew I wanted to make a lot of money. You know, when I moved to Manhattan, I'd go and walk past the Plaza Hotel and see all the dignitaries and big shots, and I'd say, one day I'm gonna stay there. You're the old one, you know, right by Central Park. Eventually, I made enough money to stay there. I said, this place is a dump. I really knew real estate when I got out of the army and went to work for a guy that was already in real estate and started working for him. That's how I really knew this is it. You know, this is what I like to do. This is where there's a lot of opportunity. You don't need a lot of education. Uh, if you're willing to work hard, you really don't need a lot of money if you think smart. The first house I ever bought, I think I used my VA loan. And it was like a no money down deal yeah. because the VA had a program. Of course. But um, I remember, you know, saving money to, you know, back then I was buying, I bought like basically crack houses that nobody wanted, you know, for like 20, 30 grand. So basically to put 20% down on something like that was only, you know, four to five, six grand. So I didn't need, I saved up some money, you know. And, um, you know, I bought the worst crap that nobody else wanted and fixed it up and made money and then took the profit from that or refinanced, yeah. bought other stuff. The first deal I ever did, I think I paid somewhere around 27.5. So I took a piece of crap and, you know, I used to buy, hey, whatever it took, I'd buy used carpeting, clean it up. I'd get, I'd buy used materials from secondhand places, uh, you know, buy the cheapest stuff I could to make it work right. And, uh, you know, didn't spend that much fixing them up, but, you know, made them decent and safe. And uh, so I took a piece of garbage I paid 27.5 for, probably threw another maybe five, seven, six, seven grand into the place. And uh, I hired guys off the street to help me in painting and all that crap. And, uh, and then, you know, so I'm into the place, say, for 35 grand, you know, based on $1,600 a month income. It's now worth $150,000 because now it was a decent looking place. I had two contracts in the housing authority proving that I had the rent coming in. The tenants only had to pay nothing or 20, 30 bucks a month because they were low income. And I went to the bank and I refinanced it and got a loan on it for probably a hundred grand back then. That's incredible. There was a lot of opportunity where I was at the time in the bad rough neighborhoods. So uh, I had stuff all over town. I had single families I'd buy, duplexes. The duplexes started becoming triplexes. And I bought fourplexes. Then the guy that I was working for doing management, I also had him. And then me and him with his money and his credit, then I started doing bigger deals. So what's important to you besides money and profit that you would say for you? It's not even the money. It's, yeah. you know, it's what you do. Okay. You know, it's a sense of accomplishment. When you can take a piece of crap and turn it around and turn it into a valuable asset, it, it's rewarding. Plus, actually, I do get a lot of personal satisfaction uh, taking garbage, fixing it up and giving it to a nice family that was maybe low income or a senior person, you know, and working with the housing authorities and, and federal subsidies. You know, I used to stay up sometimes all night because I didn't have the money to hire nobody. I physically would paint apartments and stay up all night getting a place ready because I had an inspection the next day. You gotta do, you gotta cross the line in life. If you really wanna make it and you ain't got a bunch of money, you're not born rich, you gotta cross the line. You gotta go where nobody else wants to go. You gotta work the hours nobody else wants the hours. You know, I neglected my kids when I was young, but I did it knowing that I was trying to benefit them in their future. So yeah, my kids may have missed out on, you know, 
Boy Scouts or you know some of the sports activities or whatever. And I feel bad about that, but in the long run, it paid off because now you know they're set. Yeah. You know, and um, you got to make decisions in life. If you really, really want to be wealthy, you gotta you gotta go further than the average guy next to you. You gotta put in 18-hour days sometimes. You know, when you grow up around really tough places, you know, where you're just trying to survive, literally, you'll, you survive your life, you know, then it, it gives you a sense of, uh, of, 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 you know, well, I'll be honest with you, the Army taught me that you can do anything, mm -hmm. especially if you got an Army behind you. But they taught me that, 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 that you can get it done. Just get, you can get it done. You figure out a way, you get it done, and you push yourselves to those limits. You gotta push yourself. And I wanna, I wanna retire and I wanna take it easy and let my kids, if you need me, call me. You can, I can live, I can work off a cell phone anywhere in the world. Yeah. I can probably do it right now, but my kids are in school. But I wanna retire, I wanna relax, I wanna enjoy. I don't wanna work my whole life and not ever see the benefit of it. Yeah. You know, I bought this place because it's the benefit of working your whole life. Yeah. Life is not, doesn't last forever. The clock's ticking. Yeah. We all got so much time left here on this earth. Make the best of it, make the most of it. So you want to have, you want to make sure that there's some upside in that deal, whether it's on the sale, whether it's on the monthly income, you don't want to work for free. Because then you're not, then you just, you're not going nowhere. You're like that, uh, you're like that hamster in the, in the wheel. And you know, you're just constantly pedaling, but you're not going nowhere. You got to make sure that there's a, there's a plan. You got to have a plan. You got to have goals, terms. It's all about terms. When you do have money, yeah. The money gives you power because I don't answer to anybody. So that's why I'm able to compete with all the big shots in Chicago, New York, and all the REITs because they need all these approvals. They're, they're publicly traded, they have boards. I don't answer to anybody. So I can put my money where my mouth is. I can go to you and say, you know what? I'm going to buy your house. I'm not going to pay you what the other guy's going to pay you, but he may not close the deal. I'm going to give you money today, hard, non refundable. So you know, if I don't do that deal, you keep my deposit. So uh, that's pretty much works when you're when you don't have anybody to answer to, and you got the money to risk like that. I mean, timing is very important in terms. If you give somebody good terms and good timing, you'll get that deal better than the other guy that's going to pay more money and drag it out for three or four months and subject to this and subject to appraisals and all that. I came in and said, I'm buying this house. Here's my money, and let's do the deal at this price, and I'll close it like that. Nice. That's how you get deals done. That's the only way for one single guy to get deals done in a world full of investors and big companies and, and people like uh, BlackRock or yeah, BlackRock? Blackstone. 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 Yeah, oh, Blackstone. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that's the story.